in recent time, particularly after COVID-19 period, there has been upsurge in the demand for passports due to the rate at which Nigerians travel abroad. The Nigeria Immigration Service has, however, been working to meet the demands of Nigerians in this regard. In 2021, one million passports were produced by the Nigerian Immigration Service, while the service produced 1.8 million passports in 2022. Inauguration of this passport office in Elisha is another step by the federal government towards responding to the increase in demands for passports and as well ensuring seamless collection process. The front office is where application will be made and biometric data of the African captured or collected. It is a non-judgmental center, meaning that no decision will be made here, but the application and biometric data of the applicants will be collected and forwarded to the Nigerian Indian Service for processing and issuing. The minister enjoins Nigerians seeking to apply for passports, not to cut corners to avoid being scammed. It is important also that they apply by themselves at the Nigerian Immigration Service portal, which is online and not through towns and unscrupulous officials which often bring hard aids. I assure the Nigerian Immigration Service of our government readiness to support for the service in the discharge of its mandate. I particularly urge the service to work closely with Osu State government to stop illegal migration from outside. The passport center will not only promote the socio-economic development of Ijecha land, but will also reduce traffic at the Shugo office of the service. The production center in Elisha is unique in the sense that it's the only center where state capitals will be producing their passports. The production center and the front office in Elisha, it reduces the production stress and appointment time thereby improving the Nigeria Immigration Service delivery. With the inauguration of Passport Production Center and Passport Front Office in Edesha, Osho State now has two passport production centers, with the first one situated in Oshibo. This, the minister believes, will ease passport production stress and time. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Edesha, Osho State. In Delta State, the People's Democratic Party says that the outgoing administration of Governor Okoa has done well in the last eight years. The party is optimistic that the incoming governor, Sharif Oboravi, Oboravi will uh, ride on the legacies of the predecessor in moving the state forward. Spokesperson of Delta State Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party, Fred Ogenesive in a statement reeled out at the expectations and the lofty ideas of the governor-elect and speaker, Delta State House of Assembly. He denied allegations of the huge debt profile by Governor Kowa's administration, saying that they were crafted by the propagandists of the opposition in the state as a misleading strategy to sway voters. Mr. Ogenesive agrees that the debt profile of the state is within acceptable standards and funds were prudently and judiciously applied to project the projects which has uh, upskilled socioeconomic and infrastructure development in the state. The Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining has uh, expressed readiness to support Nigeria's mining sector. Uh, this support comes crucial as Nigeria works to end insurgency in the northeast and other parts of the country. Moyo Thomas has details. The statistics from the United Nations that shows that at least one person dies every day from explosive ordnance in the Northeast is very worrying. This is more so as the insurgency draws to an end and people get reintegrated back in their communities. It may result in Nigeria beginning to record high numbers of casualties of mine action in the area if remedial measures are not promptly put in place. Already, Nigeria has the second highest incidence of explosive ordnance accidents in the world, according to the UN. The Nigerian Civil War is a case in point as years after many communities in the southeast still battle the effect of mines yet to be decommissioned.
This is one of the reasons this fact-finding visit by the delegation from the Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining is received with open arms. The group visited the National Disabilities Commission and the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and says it is ready to provide victim assistance and other forms of support Nigeria needs. It is the first time we're engaging uh, with, the, with the country. Um, I'll be looking for the next two or three days to learn as much as possible, both in terms of the needs, how quickly um, we might need to sort of uh, mobilize the support. Um, as far as we're concerned, we can actually start relatively soon, but it's important to start on the right foot um, with the commitments, of course, that, that we have from the, uh, from the Nigerian government. Um, We'll work with the committee to collect victims' data and also seek the assistance of your organization in victims' assistance activities, such as the local capacity, production of prosthesis and orthotics equipment. It's a subject that is disturbing our hearts, and it's a subject that we must conclusively eradicate. Mm. Everybody talks about the end of insurgency. The end of insurgency might be the beginning of death for so many people. Nigeria is signatory to about four different conventions that requires her to take certain actions to protect the local population from threats of mine action. The mining is not only important to help save lives, it is also important to enhance the quality of life. Muya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. As Nigeria prepares for transition to a new government, Muslim faithful have advised the president-elect, Ashwa Jubala Tinubu, to give equal op appointment opportunities to Christians and Muslims in his administration. They made the call at an annual Ramadan lecture in Abuja with the theme, Retracing Our Steps Towards the Right Path. Lara, Lara Moniju has the story. Lara Folayo, rather, has the story. It's the Ramadan season, a time when Muslims the world over observe an annual fast and pray to seek the face of God. This annual Ramadan lecture is being held in the spirit of the season. The theme, retracing our steps towards the right path, is aimed at making Nigerians, particularly the youths, do the right thing. This is against the backdrop of peer pressure and other societal ills which have impacted the young people negatively. We need to pray for our youths for them to undertake marriages. That we all need. That because the youths of today are not, they're not interested in marriages and we need to pray for them. It's still to encourage them. Religion matters, whether Islam or Christianity. The most important thing is they should be on the right path. Participants also have a message for the president-elect. They seek that he hits the ground running after assuming office while ensuring that appointments into public offices are duly spread with various religious groups getting fair representation in the country. The election has come and gone, but it's a kind of challenge, an opportunity for our president-elect to showcase and show the world that Muslim who they are. The neighborliness, the closeness, and the way he behaves is what really makes some people to really embrace Islam. And that is what I believe the president-elect should also emulate. So he has to take care of the interests of all Nigerians, whether Muslim, pagan, or a Christian. And his policies must be that take care of that as well. So in the area of electing public officers, it must, it must not be lopsided. Facilitators of the Ramadan lecture seek that Muslims assist other members of the society, particularly the less privileged at this time. They also want them to cut down on social media use, pray and meditate constantly on the holy book, and most importantly, fear God. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. And finally, on the news this hour, the Central Bank of Nigeria has advised Nigerians to embrace digital banking for ease of transactions. Officials of the bank gave the advice during a sensitization for traders at major markets in Akure, Ondo State, on the need to embrace cashless platforms for transactions. They assured Nigerians that the introduction of the e-Nara wallet 
will address the scarcity of cash and challenges faced by Nigerians. Special Assistant on Payment to the Governor of the Central Bank, Mary Fasheiton, explained that the CBN, in collaboration with the Bankers Committee, organized the sensitization for people to understand the benefits that Enara brought to the banking system. So we're here all gathered together, um, CBN principally, as well as all the other banks, and we're here to socialize on Enara um, to to bring it to the people of Accra today. As you can see, there are many of us together in unison, and the main purpose is to socialize about Enara so people understand all the benefits that Enara brings to the day in terms of the cashless policy. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's a whole lot of advantages. Yeah, uh, basically. It's, uh, it's to nullify the whole um, idea of people carrying cash around, and um, which is not so safe. Do you understand? So uh, this is a, is a good um, and brighter initiative for people to be able to move around freely without being scared of anything while they are still you know, uh, transacting. You can do almost virtually everything on eNaira, on Remita. So all forms of payments can be done via eNaira. Okay? It's seamless and it's easy to use.